I'm Keaton Punch. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the program. I am an artist, drawing, painting, sculpting, photography, filmmaking, I love it all. In more recent years, I've mainly been focusing on my passion for digital art. For me, that means using my camera and my computer to create some truly amazing work, like this, or that, or this one, or even that one. Now that you have a better idea of what I do, allow me to break down my creative process and give some insight on a few tricks I've learned over the years. Every new project begins with an idea. Inspiration can come from anywhere, an interesting location, an emotion, or feeling, or even a unique object. After I figure out what I want to create, I like to sketch it out to help visualize what I'm thinking. Here's a few examples. So the cool thing about making art is I have all this freedom to create whatever I set my mind to, except there are limitations sometimes. The first being people. I can't always get whoever I want, whenever I want for my projects, so I've had to learn how to model for myself. At first I felt uncomfortable and awkward, but over time it has really boosted my confidence and learned what it's like to be on the other side of the camera. After a while, I do get tired of seeing my own face in dozens of projects, so it's refreshing to get some new people involved. For years now, I've been having my friends model in my projects, and most of them don't even have any experience, but they've all done such a fantastic job. I think it's just a matter of properly directing them and helping them get into character. Anyone who's worked with me probably knows how much effort I put into my projects. I simply don't think it's enough just to put my models in a pretty location and call it a day. And I obviously use my editing to spice things up, but I'm also proud of my costume designs. Whether it's using color coordination or a full head-to-toe outfit, I think what my model wears makes a huge impact in my photos. So occasionally, I like to piece together a unique outfit for my models to wear. So, my custom costumes and outfits almost always begin here at the thrift store. This part is so much fun because it's like a scavenger hunt. I would search up and down the aisles and lose time while trying to find the perfect piece in the right color or the right size and then get hit with that satisfaction after I find exactly what I'm looking for. But then sometimes I don't and that's okay because I like to use whatever resources I can get my hands on to bring my projects together like cardboard and tape and hot glue and all that stuff. I'm just a big fan of the DIY process and so is my wallet. Side note. You might be thinking, Keaton, your voice, it sounds so high quality, you must be in a professional audio studio right now. Well, you'd be wrong because I'm actually in my room on my bed with a blanket over my head because this is all you really need for good voiceover work. And a decent microphone. Anyways, I wanted to give you a little tour of my photography studio since we're on the topic of low budget productions. Welcome to my photography studio, aka a normal room with a blank wall. I do have the essentials though, a white sheet and a black sheet. I also have the most basic lighting setup you can find off Amazon, in addition to some LED lights I found at Walgreens. It may not seem like much, but all that really matters is how I use my equipment. I could simply use one light, or two, or add some color. There are so many possibilities when it comes to how I light my subjects during a studio shoot. Even though I can get so creative with my lighting in the studio, I don't think anything beats working outdoors in a real environment. I just think a photo like this, as opposed to this one, has a more natural feel and creates more of a world inside itself. Since we're looking at this photo, I wanted to talk about one more thing, and that's my editing process. A common question I get when it comes to editing my photos is how long does it take? Well, the answer is usually between 5 hours and sometimes up to 40 hours. The time it takes depends on how simple or complex the photo is. For example, this photo took me nearly 40 hours to edit since I had to create this entire scene from scratch using Photoshop. While this one took me less than 5 hours since I mainly just replaced the sky in the background. Every photo is a different case and requires special treatment, problem solving, and learning along the way. Alright, let's break down this photo from the beginning. We went to Hart Park for our photo shoot and I had Paulina hold this giant roll of paper so she can pretend that it's the key and it'll help me later on when I'm editing. This is the photo we took. 
As it is with no editing, the first thing I usually do is add curves and adjustment layers. These are basically filters that affect the brightness and colors in the photo. Then I like to remove any unwanted distractions like these leaves in the corner. Now comes the fun part. So to make it look like she's holding the key, I had to use this photo and cut the key out. After the key is cut out, I can change the size and position to match exactly with the roll of paper. Next is the chests. Similar to the key, I use this photo I took and cut out the chest. In order to make the chest really feel like it's there, I had to add this grass and the shadows. After that, I created this keyhole using a few basic shapes. Then I would basically repeat this process for the other two chests in the background. Once everything is in place, I like to fine tune all the colors and brightness until it's exactly how I want it to be. And it's finished. Actually, there is one last thing I like to do at the very end of my process, and that's make prints. I just think it's so satisfying to see my work printed on paper and to hold it in person instead of having to see it on a cell phone screen. And I think it's so rewarding and worth it all to see my friends' reactions at the magic we've created together.